Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 25 of Direwolf20's Let's Play. Uh, you can see me getting started here today, crafting a couple modules. Uh, you can see a polymorphic item sink here, and a provider module. That's going into my brand new chest that I just placed down right here. So, uh, polymorphic item sink, looking good, and provider module. I'm going to leave the default settings on this, uh, mode normal. I'm not going to tell it to keep one of every item. And I'm actually going to change this guy, if I can, get under there, get out of my way for a second, uh, to do the same thing on this chest, because it's been annoying me that uh, I'm leaving one item per stack um, in my miscellaneous mod items type thing. There's a lot of items in here that are one-offs, like the screwdriver and diamond handsaw, that I don't get access to when it's one per stack. So uh, I will just disable that and put back my little blocks and make my floor look all pretty again. And then I'm gonna be moving some of my mod items out of here. Not entirely sure how I wanna do this. Um, might want to keep mod items and stuff down here and move my dirt and cobble chest down to here. That might be a, just a little bit cleaner way of doing things. So I'm gonna do that off camera and then be back. And then we'll get to building some hopefully cool stuff today. All right. All right, guys, I think this is pretty nice looking. Uh, got a red power equivalent exchange, industrial craft, and thom craft chest here. Bunch of cool toys from all those mods. And then I separated out all my build craft, rail craft, and forestry, and other miscellaneous mods, like doggy talents and such, uh, hang out in this chest. And then all the chests are normal except down here. I've got my kerbal, co cobble, sand, dirt, and gravel. Awesome. And uh, I'm poking around with Thaumcraft, keeping an eye on things with my uh, goggles of revealing. I'm getting a little bit better at understanding how all these things work. Um, so one thing I didn't know, and I don't think I ever explained to you guys, was um, the little bottom left thing down there. I know on the bottom right, down on the, this side, is uh, the Vs and taint level of the current area. But I never understood what these guys down here on the left were. I think that's the numerical value of Vs and taint in the area. I hope I'm not wrong about that, but I think that's true. So like as I move, you can see like my level's going down and the numerical number is going down. And then also the percentages next to that. What's that all about? Uh, well, after looking through the wiki, I did find it on one spot. Um, that is the current chance per five second period that the Vs or um, taint level will increase. So let's walk over here by our seal at the moment. Whoa, it's up to 32% chance. So you can see that um, by activating these seals, we're increasing the chance of um, taint growth in an area. And every time you use a seal um, to do something, it's going to increase the chance for taint to grow in an area. And if you just hang out here and don't use it, that taint percentage will start to drop. You can see it already dropped 1% from uh, a moment ago when I walked in here. It looks like just opening the portal doesn't have an effect, but actually using it instead stepping through does. So uh, if I were to hop through the portal here, kaboom, and you can see in this area it's at 22%, and then come back, see how we're up to 40% now? So uh, every five seconds there's a chance to gain one taint, and right now that chance is 40%. And if you keep using stuff, it'll continue to rise, and that's when you get some taint problems and you get some more stuff. So uh, right now, uh, in this area, it dropped down to 39 already, and it'll continue to drop. So uh, the more I'm using my Thaumcraft stuff, the more of a chance for taint to grow in an area. So I'm definitely going to have to start making sure that I have that in the back of my mind. You can also see I did stop by my uh, bees and whatnot, and I'm going to go use my little portal right now. I was uh, going back and forth for testing purposes and uh, made a big old mess of the taint area and everything, but there we go. So you can see here the uh, taint chance is around 9%. I haven't been over here quite as often. I'm going to drop off my bees and my bealizer thing and, uh, you know, figure out what I want to go build in this episode. What I do want to check uh, before I get too far into things, uh, should have some honeycomb in there. I'm not going to worry about it. Do I have any honey? All right, maybe I will worry about it. Give me some honey drops. I'm out of food. <laughs> there we go. I'll be back in a minute once these process. Hey, there we go. More food. Hooray. Food is good. Uh, might as well eat a piece of normal bread now just because my hunger bar is a little low. Let's go check on our uh, build craft area where we were building all that cool stuff. Uh, my quarry also stopped, so I'm going to have to deal with that. Um, find a spot to put all that fuel and whatnot. I might just uh, move the quarry a little bit, but we should have gotten the five red iron chip sets. That's cool, and I got myself a few iron and gates. 
uh, in between episodes there. So uh, looks like everything processed and did its job. So I'm gonna, the, the power shouldn't be flowing to these things because I'm pretty sure the lasers are intelligent enough not to draw power if they don't need it. Um, so right now, really I'm just not processing power for much of anything. Let's pop through here and get ourselves some more oil. And uh, I should maybe even go ahead and use my uh, gate conditionals for this. So let's do that, sure, why not? So I've got some red piping wire and I'm gonna grab some iron and gates. Let's start showing you guys how to use these gates for a more effective purpose. All right, so here I am in the back of my little build craft area and I'm gonna place down one of those iron and gates on the back of my uh, fuel tank here. Now this is where all the oil goes. So if I place this here and then I right click on it, you can see the iron and gate interface opens up. And what this guy is all about is on the left side, you have your conditional statements saying, if this certain condition is met, and then on the right side, you tell it what to do under those certain circumstances. So this is kind of your then conditional. So it says in the case or if this is true, then do this. And it's an AND gate. So if you have two conditionals here with the same output, uh, they both need to be true. With an iron OR gate, only one need to, would need to be true. So let's take a look what we have. If we left click here, you can see the current conditional that we have highlighted is pipe empty. And this red line in the center is telling you that the current thing you have selected is true. It is true that the pipe is empty. There's no liquid in it. And if we click through again, you can see liquid traversing. This is a liquid pipe and it knows that. And currently there's no liquid traversing, which is why we don't have a red line here. Um, if we did have a liquid in here, it would show up red right away. Uh, tank empty. Yep, that's a true conditional. So we've definitely got that being true. Uh, we've also got liquid in tank. Well, we know the tank is empty, so uh, there is not liquid in tank. And then you have space for liquid. Uh, empty means it's completely empty, but if there's one bucket's worth of oil in there, it's not empty anymore. Uh, but there is space for liquid as long as it's not full. And here's the conditional for tank full. And I'm gonna go sleep through the night and continue. And now that we're back in daylight, I can show you uh, that's about it. So uh, you can see all the different conditionals. Now I'm gonna set the conditional for space for liquid. So whenever there's space for liquid in the tank that it's attached to, and you can see the tank that it's attached to right here, right? Uh, I want it to do something. What do I want it to do? Well, my options right now are to emit a redstone signal, and that's it. Uh, but that's kind of boring, so I'm going to take some of my red piping wire and run it onto this little pipe here. And the red pipe wire can attach to your pipes, so they can run along the pipe, like that. And as soon as you have red piping wire touching one of your gates, you get a new conditional statement that says red pipe signal, or redstone signal. So I'm using red piping signal. It doesn't need to be red. It could have been any color, um, but I think iron gates can only work with the red ones anyway. Those are the uh, lowest tier, I guess, of the pipe wire. And you can see right now the red piping wire is suddenly on because we told the red uh, iron and gate here, whenever there's space for liquid, turn on the red pipe signal. Cool. And I'm gonna run my red pipe signal all the way down here. La la la, hanging out, having a good time, sending some red piping signal through our system. Dum diddy dum, and I'm gonna bring it right over here. Cool, um, and I'm gonna get rid of this thing. I don't need it anymore. See you later, buddy. Uh, what I'm gonna craft instead is I'm gonna combine two pieces of cobblestone uh, transport pipes with two pieces of gravel. And what you get is a cobblestone structure pipe. This pipe doesn't connect to anything directly and it doesn't have any specific purpose, um, aside from the fact that you can connect two different piping systems with it. So right now, if I were to run my red piping wire to here, and then I wanted to connect it to this logic gate here, or this uh, little um, iron, uh, the, the gold uh, switch pipe, there we go, found the word. Note that the red wires aren't connecting. So in order to get them to connect between a liquid pipe and a uh, power transport pipe, we have to use cobblestone structure pipe over here. And if I connect this, note that the um, red piping wire will connect from the liquid transport pipe to the cobblestone structure pipe. Then I can run it up to this cobblestone structure pipe where it loops back to here. So now we've got it set up so that we emit a red piping signal whenever we have room for liquid in our oil tank. All we gotta do now is activate a red iron, another iron and gate. And if we cycle through the power system options, you can see number one, red pipe signal on. So because we have a red wire connected to this iron and gate, red pipe signal being on is one of your conditionals. You've also got red pipe signal off, pipe empty, power traversing, and that's about it for now. I'm gonna say red pipe signal on, 
and to emit a redstone signal. Ta-da! As soon as I did that, it's starting to emit a redstone signal which activates this pipe, and it allows power to flow to my pump. So now I've just set up an automatic system which will always send a red pipe signal down whenever there's room for liquid in the tank down there. And when there's no longer room for liquid in the tank, it'll disable the red piping signal, disabling this redstone signal, breaking the power line. So let's take a look real quick at what's going on here. Pretty cool. So oil should be traversing, and if we head down in this direction, you can see the power doing its thing. How neat is that? So oil's starting to fill up in the tank, and I'll be back in a few minutes once it's done that for a little bit. And guys, strangely enough, it looks like I'm not getting any oil out of the system. I got a small amount, and my pump seems to have stopped. I'm wondering if I hit the bottom. So I'm just going to dig straight down, a terrible idea always, and see what happened. So uh, I've got my electric jet back on though, so if I do run into a problem I can quickly get out of trouble. Or so I think. Let's see how much trouble I'm going to get into for digging straight down. So far I'm not seeing anything directly below me. And yeah, I know, I passed up on some uh, gravel, or some uh, iron there. I'm not going to worry about it too much. So let's get down all the way down to the bottom of this cave and see what we've got. Hey, there we go. Looks like I did hit the bottom. Wow, I hit that bottom way faster than I thought I might. Well, that's going to be interesting. Hey, gold. Alright, I'm going to go see if I can't find any more oil. I'm suspecting I actually did hit the bottom of the oil cavern, and if that's the case, then I'm going to need to find some more source of buildcraft fueling. So, uh, oh wait, here's some, right? Or is that obsidian? Yeah, it's probably obsidian. Alright. So I guess I did hit the bottom. I thought that would be a bigger oil well. Oh well, I did get a lot of oil out of it after all. Kind of ironic that I built this neat little complex system, but at least you guys got to see it in concept. So uh, yeah, that's how um, logic gates work. Pretty cool when there's oil to be mined. And I'm going to clean up this whole thing here because I don't need this anymore, any of it. Go away, everybody. All right, I'll be right back once I've cleaned up this whole mess. Okay, somewhat cleaner than it was a minute ago, so let's go do another logic gate thing to give you guys some more ideas. Uh, did I leave this lever on again? I did. What a noob I am. So, let's make this automated right now. Um, what I've got here are a couple systems. How do I want to run this? Let me think for a minute. Alright, so I want to put a thing here, and I'm going to tell it whenever there are... We should have a conditional here for has work. What this means is the machine has some work to do. Right now, our machine has no work to do. And I'm going to put some red pipe signal on again. And then I'm going to put one here. And I'm going to also say has work. Again, no work to do. And I'm going to put a red pipe signal here. And then on this guy, I'll say when you have work to do, emit a red pipe signal. And you, when you have work to do, emit a red pipe signal. So both of these conditional gates will emit a red piping signal whenever there's work to do. And then I'm going to run the red pipe signal to here, and on this guy I'm going to say when you have a red pipe signal, emit a redstone signal. Cool. And then I don't need any of that stuff anymore, and I don't need my lever either for that matter. And I still have my electric jetpack on. So let's give this guy a try. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this because I don't need it at all anymore. So these guys should be, for the most part, automated. If I go through here and steal myself some honeycombs, looks like my bees were doing some good work. Thank you, bees. Ooh, a noble drone. Nice. I'm going to put some honeycomb. I'll just put one in there. Note that as soon as it detects that it has work to do, it's going to emit that red pipe signal, which should connect over to here, right? Are you guys connecting or what? Hmm, maybe it doesn't like the intersection. That might be a problem. I can solve that though. So let's get our honeycomb out of there. And uh, I'm guessing this is just because the uh, power switch pipe is an add-on to, uh, whatchamacallit here, build craft. So I'm going to put my power switch pipe one more block down. Power switch pipes, like valve pipes, don't seem to behave or be friends with um, corners. So not a big deal. So we connect these guys here, and we'll say when red pipe signal is on, redstone signal. So that should maybe possibly consider working. I guess we'll find out. 
I might need to connect this with a cobblestone thingy, but we'll see. So, everybody's good. Let's try it again. Honeycomb, go. Emitting a red pipe signal, no. Alright, looks like you leave me no choice. There we go. Cool. And maybe I'll mention that to the mod author. So now we're not allowing the power to come through whenever there's no work to be done. Simply place a uh, honeycomb in here, and it'll say, oh yeah, I've got work to do. And it'll emit the red pipe signal, and then turn on this redstone signal, and power will flow through. And it'll do all the work it has, and as soon as it's done with its work, it turns off and blocks the signal from running. And this should be 100% automated at this point, so that is pretty neat. Uh, I should have in my inventory here some sand to tidy up this mess I just made and I always do that get back here so much neat and cleaner so now I don't have to worry about forgetting to turn off my lever I just throw honeycombs in and it'll do the work it needs to do and it'll turn itself off when it's done cool I'll be back all right, let's analyze some of the bees I got, since I happen to notice I had some common cultivated. Eh, not bad. What did this cultivated princess turn out to be? Purebred cultivated. Okie dokie. And then uh, this forest princess was a forest forest. And I did get a noble drone, which is cool. Uh, it's noble noble, so that's kind of neat. But that's recessive. So, if I remember the little thingy that Floristar showed me. Floristar did teach me about... Um, the biome thing and maybe I should build one in here just to uh, help demonstrate for you guys. How about I get all the resources I need to build something that'll help me explain how bee mutations work um, courtesy of Floristar who if you guys really want to know about bees you definitely want to check out Floristar's channel. She knows her stuff when it comes to forestry. Um, I will be back in a few when I'm ready to talk about it and do stuff. Alright guys, I did as good an approximation of what Flora showed me as possible. Uh, hers is way prettier than mine, but hey look, I have a Punnett square on my wall. <laughs> uh, basically, here's how this little Punnett square thing works, okay? Uh, you've got two types of um, traits. Those are called dominant and recessive traits. And if we look at our bealizer here, and we were to grab, uh, let's say, a bee. Let's grab this common cultivated. We'll get some of our princesses that we haven't been uh, using just yet to process things. So I'm going to take a look at, oh, you know what else I want to grab is my noble drone. This will be a good example. Okay, so I've got a cultivated princess here. And we can see cultivated is a primary trait because it's in red. And if we were to look at... Um, one of these other ones. Do we have anything that's uh, not so primary? Here's noble. Noble's a recessive trait because it's in blue. All right. So uh, we've got this noble drone, and we've got the um, primary, uh, you know, dominant forest queen. Okay. So let's lay out how we've got this thing. All right, everyone, so we're about to get a little crash course in uh, high school biology. Uh, I had to dig deep into the recesses of my memory to remember this one, and Floristar definitely helped on that Feed the Beast map. But this is what's called a Punnett square, and it's a way to determine the uh, statistical likelihood of getting certain traits based on the traits of two parents. So you could have two parents, and what the offspring will be is uh, determined by a statistical chance. All genes, um, there's usually a dominant and recessive gene, and uh, they're laid out like this. So let's say we want to represent the queen, or the uh, princess, let's say, on the top of the Punnett square. And the drone will be on the left side of the Punnett square. Let's look at combining our common cultivated hybrid. So if we look at this, we can see that this here is a common cultivated um, princess. And here we've got a cultivated, cultivated drone. Okay, so we'll call common white, and we'll call cultivated black. So the princess here will put one white at the top and one black, because she's common white and cultivated black. And the cultivated, cultivated drone, remember I said cultivated is black, so we'll put a black cube here and a black cube here. Okay, and this is how we'll determine the statistical likelihood of getting the type of... Um, queen that we want, or I guess the offspring or whatever. So the uh, combinations here, we just want to match everything up color for color. So this is a white 
and black. And this is a black and black because we're connecting from top to left. So here is white and black combining, and here is black and black combining, and here is another white and black combining, and here is another black and black combining. So that's your Punnett square, I think. And what this means is that we've got a 50% chance of getting a purebred cultivated because we have a, you know, a purebred black and black combined. And we've got a 50% chance of getting another one of these common cultivated hybrids like this. Okay, so that's how we can determine what the offspring might be. Now for mutations and the way you get new bees is if you combine the right two combinations. Um, so let's say that uh, common and cultivated had a chance to produce a mutation. There's a random dice roll, I think it's around 8% or so, that um, you know when you breed these two things together, they'll result in a mutated offspring and give you a new breed. For example, the noble. So I've got a purebred noble here, right? And now these have all been dominant traits so far. I haven't talked about recessive. Let's go into those now. So a dominant trait will take precedence over a recessive trait. Now in this case, uh, both are dominant, so they'll be all right. We're not gonna worry too much about them. Um, but in the case of nobles, for example, if we look at our Bealizer, we can see that cultivated, uh, let's say the uh, cultivated princess here is a dominant trait, it's in red. And the noble drone, its species is blue, which means it's a recessive gene. So let's take a look at that and we'll combine these. So this is a purebred cultivated, so let's call cultivated white. So we'll say purebred cultivated. And we'll call noble black, so purebred noble. So we just have to adjust these a little bit. What we're going to wind up with is a 100% chance of getting a combination of noble and cultivated if we combine these guys because they're all the same. And uh, that's going to work out all right, but because cultivated is a dominant trait and noble is a recessive trait, the cultivated is what will always wind up having um, being like the more dominant strain. And I believe the species determines the um, uh, production of what it produces. So I guess we're going to probably get that. So I'm pretty sure I'm right about this. So let's try and combine our stuff. Um, I'll be right back. Yep, I hope I'm explaining this right, and Floristar will yell at me if I'm wrong. So let's grab some drones. I've got a couple here. Let's combine. I'm going to go ahead and pop together. And I came out the wrong side here, didn't I? Yeah, I did. There we go. I'm going to put together my uh, cultivated and noble, like I said. And this should guarantee me 100% chance to get a cultivated noble combination thingy um, and then uh, let's just put together some bees I'm not even gonna bother analyzing these guys um, I've got a forest I'll combine that with a cultivated and I've got a common which I'll combine with the meadows sure why not and I'll be back to check on these guys in a little bit all right back in my build craft room you can see we processed all that oil into fuel and I really don't have any work for these engines to do at the moment I'm gonna turn them off no sense wasting all that fuel right uh, so we'll let that stuff hang out. I do want to replace my quarry. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that on this episode or not, but I do need to figure out how I want to do that. Uh, we can see here, we might even have some items in here. Yeah, just a few, not a big deal. I'm going to set this guy back to 100% to send the items off. I'll deposit that stuff and then come back. And it should hang out here because the complete mode is on and not go anywhere. So what I want to do about this guy, didn't I cover all that up before? That's interesting. What happened to all my blocks down there? I don't even know what happened there. That's weird. All right, I'm going to think about if I want to do my quarry or if I want to work on something new. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to wrap up this episode pretty soon, so I'm going to move my quarry. Um, basically, what I'm going to do is just reorient this thing somewhere. I had to figure out exactly where I want to put it, but for now, I can turn this off. Again, no sense wasting fuel. Uh, I could use logic gates for that, but meh. I'm going to figure out where I want to place my new quarry and come right back. All right, I thought to myself for a few minutes, where would I like to place this quarry? And then I said, you know what? I should place it right next to the existing one. Why not? So I just came over here and picked up a Valiant Princess. Cool. Neat. Two Valiant Princesses of unknown genome. One's blue and one's yellow. That's 
Very cool. I have no idea what that's all about. I thought I understood bees, and then that happened. Oh, boy. I'm going to pick up these uh, cinder pod pearl thingies as well, and then uh, lay out the area for my frame. So, let's get our landmarks and levers ready. And there's no real reason not to just place it right here. So I'm going to place down a landmark and then a lever. You know what? I could even place the lever like this. Ha. All right. And we're going to zip right over to here. And uh, this looks like a perfect spot to place another landmark. And just for consistency's sake, that'll do. That'll do. All right, let's give this guy a good old uh, right click. I can take this off, right click this guy, and then I'm going to place the quarry right there behind it. So I'm going to borrow you, my friend. Really getting addicted to this sword, by the way. Ta-da, quarry frame's ready. Let's get it some power and uh, a chest. So get this guy off of here. Where's my sapphire axe? And I'm going to have to rewire pretty much all my cool stuff that I've got, but I'm not worried about that too much. For now, let's place the chest. How about right here? That might not be a bad idea, right? Try not to make too many changes um, to the functional design that seemed to work so well last time. And then just some power pipes. We'll run them down this direction. Might need a few more. Definitely need a few more. How about I make sure I have all the resources I need, and then I'll be back to finish this build. Alright, so I got my conduit pipes running over there. Um, might as well get the engines going so it starts building the uh, quarry frame for me. That should start sending power down there, and that thing will start building up. Hey, there it goes. Awesome. Oh yeah, plenty of juice flowing into that machine. Let's get our um, system over here moving. At some point, I will probably wind up making this a buildcraft blueprint, but for now... Let's pick this guy up, along with this guy. Come on. And my stuff here. Oh boy, inventory problems as usual. Do I have anything on me that can help with that? I do not. All right, I'll be right back. All right, and now I'm rebuilding my little uh, portal thingy here. I uh, just had to do some creative inventory management, but I think I got through it all. Uh, this side was the dark blue, wasn't it? Boy, I hope so. Uh, you know what? I can test that by placing my chest cart right there. Maybe it wasn't the dark blue. Was this side the other color? Hey, yeah, there it is. Cool. All right, and then the rest of that was pretty simple, if I recall. I just need one of these here and one of them here. And then I need my item loader here. I'm going to set this guy to uh, number 512. Sounds like a good number to me. And complete mode on. And then we want a redstone torch under the ground here. which I should have one over here I can borrow. There we go. Definitely need to rebuild this with a builder at some point and a template, but we'll get around to builders and templates in the future, I assure you. And then this guy, and then just some tracks. All right, so if everything's set up properly, we should already have some items in here. Even got some sugar cane, look at that, and some basalt, super cool. Let's place our item cart thingy there, and we'll just wait a few minutes for everything to load up. I'll be back in a few. You know what? I can just fix this by making this uh, item loader the percent thing. And then we'll set it back to number. Testing. Always test. Cool. It's running. I love it. All right, guys, uh, and unfortunately, I think we've hit that wrapping up point, haven't we? Yep, definitely looks like we've hit that wrapping up point. 
So I'm jumping into my assembly table here. I'm going to instruct it uh, to make some more red piping wire. I'm gonna need more assembly table stuff uh, between this episode and next. So let's let these engines run. Assembly table go. And uh, next episode, I'm gonna come back and do a little bit of work, I think, on that forestry area that I've been neglecting. I've got a bunch of peat to deal with. Uh, I need to build a system to get the peat back to my main base and to process it and use it in all my different uh, 2B forestry farms. So this is Direwolf20 signing off on episode 25 of Direwolf20's Let's Play. Hope you guys are enjoying it. And next episode, like I said, we'll get into some more forestry stuff, probably aside from bees, maybe beside me trying to figure out what these guys are. All right, everybody, take it easy.